Hello. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. All right. Yep. Cool. Yeah, I'm just messing around in Blender during the break. I'm trying to get some hotkey mastery. There, there is some. There is something cool about that. I didn't know I can do that. That's great. Just gotta keep practicing. But there's a video that I got that I'm just gonna sit down and just watch. Um, <laughs> where it's all about just, um, uh, it's just all about creating, um, uh, what you call it? Like mastery and just learning through hotkeys. Oh, this is cool. Damn, dude. <laughs> Blender is so powerful. Because I'm assuming if I just do this, whew, that's OP, dude. That is fucking OP. <laughs> Holy crap. Because if you, let's say you created a, um, do this. Let's see what happens if I do this. Oh, I can merge? Yeah, you dummy. Hell yeah. Oh no, it's not, not merging. Uh, object offset. Relative offset. I see. Just create no offset. That's what I needed to do. Uh, wow, this is cool. This is perfect. And then I just need to consider how to do the last one. Is there a way to fix the count, fix the length? No, I see fixed count, constant offset. I'm not sure what that means, object offset. I think I know what that means, end cap. I don't know what that is. Interesting, but that's really OP. Have you guys, does anyone else here use Blender? Or has any understanding of how they use Blender? Um, I used it on a project to make um, cinematic animations, but I just changed the hotkeys to Maya and <laughs> animated there, so. I see. Yeah, that, that's a, that's, um, that's a thing that I think a lot of people tend to do. And uh, I was told that you shouldn't do that. <laughs> um, people say you should just learn the hotkeys. And I agree. I just haven't done it. You know, it's crazy. It's like this, um, the rendering is freaking crazy. I'm not sure if you guys ever mess with this, but the rendering alone is already pretty imp impressive. And then you can do bevel. Oh yeah, this is, I just need to get used to all of these tools. Cause I don't know how to use most of this stuff. But anyway, all right, that's enough of my diddle daddling. I wonder if I can get rid of or shorten this. No, actually, hold on, let me see if I can do this. That's the one thing. I don't know how you can pop these out. Like how you can pop multiple windows out. The only solution I can think of is having a widescreen monitor, like a wider screen. Anyway, I tried 3ds Max in the past and someone showed me how he did it and he's really good. So I went just with the capturing drawing because it will take a long time to get good at 3D at the time. Yeah, at the time, I think maybe four or five years ago, getting good at 3D um was a challenge i'll see it uh julian has to go to school okay just making sure just making sure uh, but nowadays it's really good to get good or it's really easy to get good at you know these tools so um i'm spending i'm gonna be spending this next 
few days to really kind of create a strong foundation in these tools. So that way I can just start making things and start practicing uh, effectively. And I'm going to, from here on out, every day, spend about half an hour to an hour making something in 3D, just so I can master it. I did the same thing with 3D coat. It took me about a good month to really feel comfortable with 3D coat. And um, now I'm really comfortable in there. Uh, I'm going to try to use it even more, but the more and more I'm messing around with Blender, the more I'm thinking uh, I might not need to. I might, uh, might uh, just only stay in Blender. There's a couple things that 3D code does really well that Blender doesn't do yet. Uh, but I think there's some really good add-ons that I just need to mess with. I could be wrong. I could be entirely wrong. Because I look online and I see what other people have made, you know, using the same tools like 3D code. Um, I'm sorry, Blender. And I'm realizing that like, no, these people are able to make these amazing things. Why can't I? Um, and it's usually because I just don't know how. And so I just need to learn how. I was learning how to use the volumetric fog yesterday, watching some tutorials. Uh, my buddy has a really good tutorial. Uh, I haven't watched it yet, but I'm planning on doing so. Eventually. All right. Is Blender worth learning if you want to sculpt? Uh, yeah, I think so. There's some really amazing sculpts out of it. I think Blender's just good to learn in general. Like I have a lot of great tools. I don't know how to use uh, most of them. I use uh, Blender mostly for animation professionally, but uh, I think it's time for me to like really learn it. And it's only getting better. It's not going anywhere. It's gonna just become more and more prevalent as more people use it. All right, I'm gonna try to make some brushes. So I think this brush is a good brush. I'm going to put this on the front end. What brush is this? It's more of my drawing brush. I need to reorganize these brushes. Um, I wonder if I can make like a straight. Oh, yeah, this is pretty, pretty useful. Anyways, any questions? How should we ask? Write them down or microphone? I prefer microphone. Um, I guess so, but you're already great at illustration. I'm not good enough to do freelance, so you can spend the time to learn Blender and you'll still be in the band of concept artist. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's exactly right. In fact, I tell people all the time, you should uh, get some sort of mastery. I'm already relatively known in the industry uh, as a, you know, concept artist, well-known concept artist. So absolutely, um, it's going to be easier for me than someone like you who's just still trying to figure things out. Absolutely. I do not disagree with this premise at all. Um, but let me also make clear that when I was starting out, I also studied uh, a lot of different tools, but always in the lens of trying to become a great character concept artist. So I learned ZBrush, but not because I needed to learn ZBrush, you understand? Um, for concept art, like that was not important. I learned it because I wanted to be a great uh, concept artist. And I wanted nothing to hold me back. You know what I mean? And I don't want something as silly as like maybe if I needed to do something in 3D, 
I, I couldn't do it in 3D. And there have been plenty of times where I've done concepts in 3Ds, even in the past. I used to work for Hasbro, and that was a, that's a great example of me using 3D in the past for a concept. I modeled them in 3D and then I animated them. Uh, I've got a question. Yeah, go for it. Uh, do you think it's worth doing like traditional, practicing like traditional painting, I guess? So I can do, like I, I can do life drawing classes there near me, which I think is worth doing like, so like acrylic painting or something like that. I see. Um, yeah. Learn anything and everything that you need to help you get better at this thing called art. You know what I mean? Uh, I did acrylic painting in the past and it helped me out a lot. But uh, it was always, again, it was always in the, in the lens. And this is always important. It was always in the lens of like, character concept art you know so if you're doing life drawing it's the same thing it's always going to be in the lens of character concept art okay um so when i learned acrylic painting uh what i did what i did was trying to become a better painter so i would try to like limit my uh, essentially limit what would be considered um just for painting like I would like actually also practice um what you call it I would actually practice you know character design but with acrylics you know I wouldn't just limit it to like still life which most acrylic painting or any kind of traditional painting is so when I would do life drawing uh I would do the like let's say you have like a five minute pose right then I would do the five minute pose but again, in, in the guise of like, I need to stay focused. Uh, I'm a character designer, first and foremost, you know? So never lose track of that. And so I would do studies that were exactly focused on doing character positions and stuff like this. You know what I mean? Like, so I'll do like the five minute pose and then I would do a, um, what you call it, uh, a character design of that pose. Make sense? Yeah. Like I would just do like, maybe like I'll do five minutes and then I'll just look at what was standing out to me about whatever that person was doing in that pose and like stuff that made sense to me. I was like, oh, that's really cool, right? And then I would actually try to then, um, I would actually try to like then design a character, you know? I always call call this like contextual learning. Like you should always have context of why you're learning something. Because if you're just like mindlessly just studying anatomy, you'll just get really good at like anatomy, you know, like figure drawing and such. Like there's not going to be a direct correlation. At least you're not going to see it when you are messing around with um, uh, what you call it. When you're messing around. Uh, with your character designs, right? Because you're just going to know how to draw a really good naked person, but that doesn't necessarily mean you know how to design a cool character, you know? So when you draw the naked person and then take from that drawing, like a study, you know, and then do like a quick one minute character design based off of that pose, that's going to, that's going to stick with you a little bit more. You know what I mean? Then if you just go out of your way and just like uh, get really good at drawing naked people. So same thing with acrylics, like if you're studying acrylics, like learn it, but then learn it in the context of painting better character designs. So for instance, I learned a lot about mother color. So I had a, a better understanding of how to do colors and think about colors, you know? Yeah. That uh, resonates even to this day with my ability to draw char good characters.
Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Just don't, wanna... just, don't just study for the sake of studying. Always understand what the goal is, why you're studying this thing. Yeah. Sorry, my phone's going off. Yep. Does that does it help? Yeah, because I don't want to. Like, I like uh, really ex kind of expressive brushwork. Yeah, so uh, then, like, but I don't want to rely on brushes in Photoshop without knowing what I'm actually doing. Absolutely. Like, you, you, you want to build kind of a, a situational thing where you're you are building a skill that is going to help you moving forward. This brush is dope. I'm going to save it. Why does it look different in the thumbnail? Hold on, hit multiply. The thumbnail looks different. Weird. All right, but I'm keeping this drawing brush. I need to create a brush. You know what I need? I need a brush that anyway, sorry. I'm talking to myself. I'm trying to create like better tools. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what's the minimum amount of uh, character pieces you think uh, we should have before we, we go around and uh, start applying to companies? That's a great question. Uh, I, I usually recommend, you know, a good book full, right? Like 12 pages or 12 character designs and each character in themselves could be several pages. You know what I mean? Uh, or a few pages. Like imagine like one character design would have orthographics, you know? would have um, not only orthographics, but like, um, uh, what you call it, you know, the iterations and like maybe animation frames, you know what I mean? Like these types of things, right? Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't just be, it wouldn't just be, you know, like cool paintings. Like it would just be like how you got to that final painting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like not 12 different characters, but you know, like a variety of, of I guess, skill sets, but within character design. Yeah. And if you have about, no, I actually do think 12 full characters is ideal. That could end up making a, a 24 or even a 30 page portfolio. I think beyond that is, is unnecessary. Um, I have hundreds. Okay, so don't use me as an example. I'm an exception. I have too many portfolio pieces. I need to actually um, start to allocate them a little bit. But you get my point, I think, right? Yeah. Like you should just have an, uh, enough stuff in your portfolio that cl clearly demonstrates that you're a capable individual in this world we call concept art. Okay. What do you mean animation? You mean like like uh, kind of like storyboard? No, um, like showing how that character would move. Gotcha. It would just be like five or six frames or something of like a move. It wouldn't necessarily be a an actual <laughs> character animation. That's like a whole different skill set, right? It'll just show like you you also are considering how characters are moving. You're not just also just painting them really cool. You're you're considering all sorts of stuff. <laughs> You know? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, man, that's a good question. Uh, Richard Anderson's got a good uh, video on Art Station about the motion stuff. It's pretty good. No, Rich Anderson's a, sh a joke. Yep. Just, <laughs> I just did like a whole video <laughs> about how I love him. <laughs> yeah, I saw that as well. And I'm like, he's a he's a joke. No, he's he's amazing. He was one of my favorite uh concept artists when I was starting out. Like I would look at his work a lot. I still do. I just forget like how good he is. <laughs> 
Anyway, any other questions? Yeah. Could you, um, like, you know that I don't know much about uh, this uh, industry. Could you talk a little bit about it? Okay. About the concept in industry in general? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, like, maybe, like, what's your day to day? Yeah, okay. So, I'll, I'll kind of give you guys a, a broad overview um, of way of thinking about this industry. Okay. So the film and film and game industry is an industry that is, you know, well, concept art in general is in multiple facets of multiple different industries. And within concept art, obviously there's facets like, um, character designer, environment designer, prop, vehicle, robots. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, there's like a variety of different things you can do within those industries, you know? But broadly speaking, to be a good concept artist, <coughs> all you got to do is be able to explain somebody's idea to them visually. So somebody comes to you and says, I want to be able to, or I want, I have this idea for sharks that, you know, use pizzas as weapons or they have chainsaws on their mouths, right? As crazy as that might have sounded, it's your job as a concept artist to design and create a version that doesn't look crazy, you know, or maybe it is crazy. Maybe it's kind of like the gimmick, whatever the, whatever the goal was from the original, um, the original uh, direction of the, the project, right? Whatever that may be, right? That's, that's ultimately what I'm talking about, you know? Is that you need to do that visually. So I'll try to draw a shark. Now, depending on whether you're in the game industry or the film industry or the genre, depends on how you should go about doing that, right? And so if you work in the film industry, then it's most likely going to be a live action, some sort of animation. It's going to move a lot and it's going to have a like, potential a lot of dynamic movement where in a video game it might have a lot of dynamic movement still but it's ultimately a character that we need to have running an engine and we should be able to see from every angle you know and it's got to look good from afar there's a lot of things that are even more important but even though these things are true in film you know or in commercial like that doesn't change because you can have games that are very stylized or realistic and movies are stylized and realistic. You know, it just, just depends on who you're working with. So a good way of thinking about these industries, instead of thinking about like what you can do, because again, it, it can vary. It really it doesn't really matter. Because I've drawn creatures for film that also could work in video games. It's just a matter of who the client is. So it's more about time. So this is where it really is different. And the way that you should see this is that commercials, um, the turnaround is that it should have been done last week. Like the concepts, it's like it's you only work on it potentially only for a day. Music videos, same thing. Anything like short form, like short form, you know, it's going to be a short turnaround too, you know, for obvious reasons. And then you should look at um, you should look at projects that are longer will take a little bit longer right so films uh it's still quick turnaround let's say like a few months maybe a year at the l longest like one full year but no I, I haven't seen projects that last longer for a year other than like james cameron's avatar right or any other kind of crazy big franchise maybe but typically a few months two years how long you're going to work on a movie and then video games take much longer to make and you obviously are longer to get through, right? You have a, you spend several hours, if not months and years into one single game, right? Engaging in it. <clears throat> so the, the process of building it last years too, you know, my buddy worked on Evolve for like six years before it was ever released, you know? 
And so the, 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 the timing and the speed of like getting things done usually isn't as important for a film for that reason, you know, like people aren't necessarily um, in a hurry uh, in games as they are in like in film. Make sense? Yeah. So the day to day depends on the studio really, right? But uh, like you guys know, you guys have taken my class already. You guys have heard me talk about these types of things. I rely on systems and patterns. I don't rely on, on um, specifics and outlying situations. I, I work in generalities and statistical relevance. Meaning that what generally works and what's statistically most likely to work, these types of ideas. You get it? Mm. So what, what will work generally? Uh, having, a good, um, having a good understanding of design, right? That's gonna al almost always be universally important, right? Having a good concept, right? Like this all, doesn't matter who I'm working with. You know what I mean? Um, having good visuals and good understanding of design, people are going to want that shit, right? Okay. Uh, another good example. Um, having, you know, clarity of design, the stuff that I'm teaching you guys, right? When I give something to a client, they are not like, what am I looking at? You know? Clarity. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Like this stuff is true no matter where you work okay and the better you get at this the more jobs you'll keep getting because people will be like dude this guy knocked it out of the park you know you know every time uh, as an art director you know as i've been art directing more and more projects it's clear to me that people just don't get this there's so many people who just don't get this and you know i'm working with a client uh, I'm working with Riot specifically, and you know they want to meet with me because they don't have any art director on this project, and they sent me kind of the the first thing that they got from this the studio, and they're just like, we don't like this at all, and I looked through it and I was just like, well, this is like the first draft, and it's completely ambiguous, everything about it, you know, you know. It's like, it's just so rough, it's so abstract. And if you leave too much abstraction to the imagination, then people will fill in the gaps. And if they don't fill in the gaps with things that they like, then you're screwed. They didn't give them options and all that stuff. So this is like automatically my like first feedback that I'm gonna give is that they need more options. Like the same way that I art direct you, or the teach you guys is like the way I art direct and it works really well in this context. You know, and I, again, I think it's because people just want to just do that one first drawing and then just hope that the client's going to be cool, you know, <clears throat> but again, in my experience, just never is the case. People just don't get it right the first time, you know, this brush works. I approve of this brush. Let's see, save it. I need to make another one. Let's put this right here. Um, I'm gonna scatter this brush. And so my did my day to day is like if I get a job, right? Like if I get a brief, you know. My first thing is to see what the client may want, okay? So let's say that shark laser thing, right? Now, whether you think that's a cool idea or not is irrelevant to the job, okay? Uh, I was talking with somebody in my latest stream and they brought up something that I thought was actually pretty good. I don't really do this, but I think it's actually good advice to kind of listen to what he said eight on ten about like vetting your own clients right if you don't like the project like if you think it's stupid right then just don't take the job you know but if you're in a position where you feel like you have to take every job that comes to you you know 
um, which is not necessarily the case for me, but I just like to work. You know, I like to do these types of things. It's like problem solving for me. Um, the first thing you should do is like think about what the client is intending, right? If they're like doing this kind of weird shark game or project, you don't just immediately just write it off, right? You just try to think, okay, but how could this be cool? Are there examples of this kind of same genre that are really cool, right? So the first thing I'll probably think of would be like, you know, Ninja Turtles or something like that, you know? Because that's kind of a silly premise, you know? And that's one of the largest franchises out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, but, all right, so what makes this, the Ninja Turtles good? And, then, and if it's something that you already kind of like, like I love Ninja Turtles, then it should actually be not too hard to kind of build around that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. About around your own nostalgic love for that project, whatever that may be. <clears throat> the next step is to just to build concepts that reflect that and a variety of them. And so that's what I would do. I will just take note, gather appropriate reference, and then just start to build a library of visual reference for me to follow. So that way I can appropriately build um, what I think the client's gonna want. You know? Yeah. Dude, this brush is dope. Just made a, my fa next favorite brush. I'll give you these brushes. Once I'm done, guys, don't worry. Uh, can I get that brush? What brush that be? You know, one of my favorite ways to draw environments is to like pretend that I'm in the environment, like looking around. Um, I don't have the, I don't have the GPU on right now, but normally if I did, I would use the spherical painting, the panoramic painting option. We can paint inside of a sphere. Super dope. Anyway, um, so I would gather all the reference and then send them all the iterations based off of my uh, research. And that sounds familiar, right? Because that's what you guys have done. <laughs> you know, I teach you what I know works really well. Again, because I, I rely on things that I, I believe are consistent, not on what I like. You know, whatever I like, I do it for myself. I don't share, uh, I don't wait for a client to hopefully pick me so that they can have me do things that I like to do. Usually, I'll just do whatever is asked of me. This is a pretty cool concept of environment. Let me save this brush too. Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, once I get that concept to my client, you know, then I um, then I just go ahead and begin, you know making the concepts uh, based off of what they approve of and what they don't approve of. Some stuff they approve of, some stuff they don't, you know? And regardless of how I feel about it, I just move forward. So let's say I give them the five or six paintings and then I'll be like number two, number five. Then I'll combine those and do iterations. And I'll do another round. And I just keep doing that. You know, I just keep, no matter what, I just keep giving them variations. I never stop giving them variations until literally the final nail is in the coffin where they're like this is perfect right once they say that you know then i just render it and give them whatever they need like orthographics you know animation keyframes color version whatever they need and then i just move on you know um and it's really that simple and so the, my philosophy when working with clients is just do whatever they ask you to do. And if they want you to, um, 
you know, voice your own opinion. Maybe they like respect you and they want to kind of hear what you think, you know, they have some sort of, uh, you know, they want to really kind of get an idea of what you might think about the project and how it's going. Then you can tell them then when they ask you, but if they don't ask you, then you don't tell them anything, you know, because you don't want something as silly as your opinion to taint their opinion. Right. Mm. Yeah. You, you want, you want your images to speak for themselves. If your images are not good, then you want them to tell you that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If your concepts are not hitting the mark, you want them to tell you that. If, if you are not doing a good job, you want them to tell you you're not doing a good job. Right. So that way there's no confusion from either party, you know, and so you can just start to uh, work effectively and not based off of like, oh, well, you know, I was thinking this and thinking that because ultimately when it gets in front of like actual people, you know what I mean? Like people that are going to engage in your content, they might not have these opportunities to hear what you had to say, you know? Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I think it's really wise to just kind of let people have a visceral reaction to your work versus kind of leading that with like, well, this is what I was thinking and these are my thoughts. I just send them what I did and then they tell me what they think. Because ultimately that's what's going to happen in the real world, right? When the project is in front of like real people, they're going to have an opinion. For instance, I worked on this design. It's really supposed to be like scary and creepy. And my client reached back to me and they're just like, oh man, it's so gross. And I'm like, perfect. <laughs> you know, because that's the goal of the, the, the project is to make it freaking disturbing, you know? Like we hit it. Like, and you know, they acknowledge that. They're just like, oh man, this is so gross. And you know that's good, <laughs> you know. And they're they're having a meeting with the one of the major producers. Uh, actually, as we speak, they're probably done with, or no, they're in the middle of it. So I'll I'll get uh, some insight on how it went. Um, probably you know in a little bit. You know. And that's kind of my philosophy, and again, just in general. I don't like to uh, get in the way. I used to in the past, and I realized that's a problem because whenever I did, and then we would look at like the final result, it just never seemed like all of this kind of wordplay mattered, <laughs> if that makes sense, right? Like all of this kind of like, oh, the philosophy of good concept art, you know? Like I try to let a lot of that philosophy just be intuitive nowadays, not like let it uh, be obvious. Dude, this brush is tight too, man. I think I need a brush that goes in an angle too. Or maybe, maybe I can make this go in an angle. Let's do direction and then see how that works. <sighs> GG, dude. Is that how you're getting that variation of color with the, the color dynamics option? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me go ahead and do that. Any other questions? I see someone had a question in the chat. I'm going to read that. It looks like it's a choose question. Oh, there's a couple questions. Uh, what were you doing before you got into the art industry and where were you studying to get good? Uh, also, how long did it take it? Uh, did it take and how did you manage to stay focused while dealing with real life and the fact that there was a lot of great artists out there already? Uh, what were you doing before you got into, oh, you just repeated the question. Um, so, uh, I studied violently, man. Like I just studied everything all the time. And at the beginning, that's what I did. I studied a lot of different things at different paces. Uh, obviously, I don't suggest this for people now. And 
one of the reasons why I don't suggest it uh, to do that because uh, nothing really stuck. It was only until um, I started to have more focus that I started to improve more rapidly. And so one of the things that I tell people is to just, you know, obtain more focus. And um, the things that eventually helped me, I got better faster, was this like, you know, more focused approach. And how I improved based off of this more focus uh, was to just stay on topic. So like when I wanted to learn anatomy, I just stayed on anatomy for like a few weeks until I really understood it. And then once I understood anatomy, I just began to practice my anatomy on my characters. And then from there on out, I just did live drawing every, every week, at least three or four times a week to really kind of uh, hit the next level of mastery. You know what I mean? Um, and so then on top of that, you know, having a lot of, uh, oh shoot, I think I need to break free from this. Okay. Uh, I did a lot of just studies of other stuff that I didn't know I should have studied, but you know, I, that general knowledge was just floating around. Um, like I'll do master copies. And again, ultimately I learned that that was not the best strategy, you know, and that I should have been a lot more focused. But when I did these master studies and master copies, I was learning a lot about like, you know, just gen in general, like how to be better about, um, just to try to be better at like um, my tools. Like I started practicing Photoshop better. I started practicing how to use Photoshop better and more effectively. And then when I started realizing that was kind of the main value of learning Photoshop, then uh, I began to be more focused. I would then just make only studies about how to get better at Photoshop. I wouldn't necessarily try to focus in on anything else, you know? Um, like I did before, I would just get too many things on my mind and try to get good at all these different things. And now I just try to stay focused. Uh, for instance, to this environment stuff, uh, for the last few days, all I've done is tried to build up my anatomy when it comes to understanding environments. Like I just explained to you guys, right? I'm trying to become a better environment artist and try to have a better understanding of environments. And it takes, uh, it takes uh, a lot of effort to get good at that. And so right now I'm trying to, as you can see, I'm trying to see how I can come up with like really quick environment concepts, whether I'm successful or not, you know, that's, that's something I'm gonna find out as I do it. Uh, but and it's kind of partly why I'm also just kind of stuttering when I'm talking because uh, I don't do environments a lot. So I'm actually concentrating, I'm really focused. I'm trying to focus and ch to teach the class at the same time. It probably wasn't a smart idea to do environment. <laughs> but uh, it's a good example of like watching me learn. Um, but one thing that I, you know, realized though when I was studying in the past was that a lot of my friends just weren't doing this. They just were just painting the same old characters that they liked, you know, and they kept on drawing the same shapes that they liked. So they were never really improving you know, they just kept on drawing more of the same stuff. You know what I mean? And then I was just always like challenging myself, always trying something different. Uh, and that attitude has never really changed. I'm still this kind of person, individual. I still think this way, you know? <clears throat> Which has, you know, given me a lot of value in terms of becoming uh, well-known in this industry for that very thing. And again, I think a lot of times people get caught up with, you know, um, they get caught up with like the detail of trying to get better at everything. And they get caught up with like, you know, focusing on all the other artists out there that are so good at so many different things. Like you mentioned, how do I ignore that? And, and how do I deal with that? And I just ignore it. I don't even think about it. I don't worry about what other artists are doing in reference to my 
own individual growth. I only look at other artists as examples of what I should do, right? Not as, not as a deterrent, more of, a, of an encouragement. And I noticed a lot of my friends just didn't do that kind of stuff. They just didn't, and I did. And because I did that, and because I spent my time practicing things that were hard, uh, when I first started again, like I said, I didn't know any better, so I tried everything. I tried all sorts of stuff. Uh, that's why I have this more profound understanding of things these days. And I think for someone who's starting out, uh, you know, that happens. And if it can be demoralizing. So that's why I always tell people what I've been telling you, focus, 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 focus. Because that was ultimately what expedited my skill. I mean, that's what really got me better real fast, relatively. You know, it still took time. But like, if it took me like a year to feel like I had one good piece, it took me another year to make nothing but good pieces where I felt really comfortable. And another year where um, I was literally considered a professional because I started working in the professional industry at like big studios you know? And uh, for me, it took about three years to really make it into the industry at a high level. And I think today, somebody can do that even faster, probably in a year, if they really stay focused. And the reason why I say that it can take about a year is because, um, how many tools are available, you know? There's so many tools to learn from. It's like, it's more of like a challenge to pick what to learn from, right? Not so much whether you can, where in the past, maybe I had I actually did have the advantage of having very limited choices, so it was easier to stay focused. But that's kind of a lame excuse to be like, I have so many ways to get better. I don't know which one's the best way, <laughs> you know? Uh, none, of, none of them is going to be the best. You just pick the one that you think resonates with you and start there and just keep moving from there. It's silly to be trapped by options. You know, it's kind of like a first world problem. Um, and there was another part of your question that I, I kept on trying to get back to it. No, I think I answered all of them. I think we got through all of them. I just got a little distracted because I was like trying to paint this thing. <laughs> it got a little out of my control. So I was like, oh shit, I need to like, get, ma maintain control again. I love how I did the clouds though. I thought that was a really effective strategy. I've never been able to do clouds that amazingly. Then I ruined it. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Um. Yeah, I have a question. Kind of more personal so sorry about that but how dare you <laughs> um so first week you were asking some of the guys um where do they wanted to work and i guess that um relates to what you were saying now of you need to focus to get there um, yes sir always working that lens and i didn't really had an answer for that question so i, I just started doing whatever and now I guess my question is, um, how, how can I focus my work? Um, how can I add this course to the lens of being what I want to be, which is like a director slash creator of TV series on the vein of Over the Garden World, Steven Universe, Advent, Adventure Time? Because I feel like the designs I'm doing don't relate at all to that. Uh, I don't think they do either. So the question is, that's what you want to do, though? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And when did you discover this? Uh, yesterday. And why, why do you think these are the genres that you want to get in, involved with? Um, what do you mean by the genres? Like TV, what? TV yeah. series? Yeah, why did you decide to pick that up after all? Um... I don't know. I just like them a lot and I would like to try my hand at working in that. I mean, I've done games, I've done advertising, I've done medical stuff and I've never done TV series or movies and I want to try TV series. 
Okay, but the question is, um, like, like, do you actually like this industry? Like, do you like this? Would you think you would like this stuff? Have you ever done it and stuff like that? Because you want to be careful. Uh, you don't want to pick something that you just want to do because you think you would, uh, you want to experience that as a new career path. You want to make sure you pick it because that's what you want to do, right? And for instance, like I always, always wanted to work at Blizzard, you know? That's just yeah. been obvious to me that I wanted to work there. And when I ultimately did work there, I loved it. <laughs> you know, it was not hard to like really enjoy it, you know? And so for me, when I tell people to think about this very clearly and make a very clear decision, it's because yeah, I don't want you to accidentally get work somewhere that you ultimately do not like to work at, you know? But you just did it because, you know, oh, this just seems like a cool idea. You gotta really think it through. And now with that being said, if that's still the case, like you still like this is not any of this is totally what I want to do. Like I'm like real I'm like really in it. I'm really in, interested in this, you know? Mm -hmm. Um then you know, you did this stuff for my assignments and we're on the second week and normally, normally I don't allow people to kind of change genres because it just is like a thing and it takes time. Yeah. You course. know? Uh, I will allow you to kind of to make this shift if you generally do want to make this change. Okay. Um, but here's the, here's the catch. You have to maintain this moving forward, you know, because, uh, and you know, we talked, I talked earlier to uh, one of the other students, Michael, right. About how uh, I've known him for a while now. So I know that this is just how he does things. He just keeps changing his mind, you know, and you have to re recognize that that, that premise of, uh, of or approach to getting better ultimately leads to a path that is full of regret, you know, and it makes you feel like a lot of remorse because you just feel like nothing has been done and time has gone by, you know what I mean? And so it's really important that when you do make this, this kind of like kind of choice of like, I don't want to, uh, I want to do this thing. I don't want to do this other thing that you maintain that moving forward. That is the only thing I have to say about that. Okay. And then once you've done that, then you just, you just go and learn it, you know, and then you won't have any regrets. Like I learned programming, but I really learned it. Like I learned it in like, uh, uh, two years, it took me two years to learn it. I'm not a pro. I'm not getting paid for it. I have no regrets because that knowledge that I gained and acquired was on my free time and everything that I did, you know, everything that I did for that, I, I am very happy, happy for, because now I know how to use some of these higher tech technologies and tools and have a better understanding than I did before I started, you know? Mm -hmm. And what's cool is that like this new job might like this, this, this knowledge that I've acquired might benefit me greatly now, you know? And uh, all that stuff that I practice, it might have a lot of value for me now moving forward, you know? Like practically speaking. So I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm even more vindicated as I'm getting at. In fact, I think that's partly why I even got the job was not because I'm a excellent painter or designer is that I'm like really technically under like s s uh, suave, you know? In fact, this is why I think it's made me a great art director for this other project, you know? Cause I, I respect the tech that goes behind like what these people are trying to do, you know? Yeah. So you can, you can make the shift. And don't feel that uh, I am not capable of giving you critiques on that aesthetic. I am quite capable. Have you ever worked in a project like that, like TV series? Uh, an animation? animation? Yeah. Yeah, I've worked in animation. Um, what would you say is like the 
best path to get to that position of creator or director? Is it like the animators, is it like the storyboarders or the character artist that get there? Uh, probably storyboard artists. Okay. Um, but to become a director is just a whole thing. It takes time. But to be uh, a storyboarder, artist, or animator, these are probably the best ways to do it. Because when you do that, um, when you put a lot of your time and effort into the, those things, right? Mm -hmm. um, you allow for, uh, what you call it? Like you have a, a functional understanding. You know what I mean? Because you 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 know what it is to actually tell a story because you've done it. Yeah, you know what I mean. You're not you're not a joke. <laughs> Maybe I am. <laughs> no, like I'm saying, like if you definitely know how to like to tell a story, like Tim, um, I'm not Tim. I keep saying Tim. Um, Phil Lord and uh, uh, oh, shoot, I always forget the other guy's name. But those guys who did, uh, the guys who helped create um, Into the Spider-Verse, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the, the directors and producers, like they were storyboard artists originally, you know? And yeah. they eventually got into the director role with, you know, how, how uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Rain was one of their first ones. They did the Lego movie together the first one and the second one you know so they they also did 21 jump street you know which was good it was a good show it was a good movie you know it's a fun one yeah so they they are really good storytellers and they know how to make movies really well and they originally started as storyboard artists you know No, I need to learn that. <laughs> I, I think if you're just a character designer, you're going to have a harder time directing because it requires you to tell stories and you don't really know how to tell stories as a character designer. Like, it's not a given. But if you're a storyboard artist, that's like right, that's like very attached to storytelling, you know? Yeah. It's a very, it's a very linear and very obvious path. I think for the class, uh, what I would probably have you focus on is just character designs in that aesthetic. So that way you can at least start drawing in that world, you know? And then if you decide you want to really direct a movie or whatever, then you can either build a, you know, treatment for your stories with your new found this character design skills, or, or you can go ahead and begin, um, what should we call it? You know, you can begin <clears throat> like actually animating and creating your storyboards for your stuff or make a graphic novel, you know? Mm -hmm. You just got to demonstrate you can actually tell a story, dude. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and that's, that's the honest answer to that. Cool. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Of course. Any other questions? I think someone wrote something in the chat again. Hold on, I'll read that chat. I'm trying to find some balance in this image. Channeling my inner Rich Anderson and Sparth. Actually, I like the original colors. Let me do this though. Color lookup. Let's try drop blues. That was a good one. Let's see. BG usually has something that feels very cinematic. There you go. And then 
Need to put this on a hotkey. Add noise or an action. All right. Make it feel cinematic. I should have put some debris. I'm not cinematic enough. Um, what was the question? Let's say you have a job. Uh, Ian McKegg's good at everything as far as I can tell. No, he's not. He's not good at everything. He's just really good at drawing people and maybe some illustrative skills. He's just a really good illustrator. By, by no means is he great at everything. He's a great educator. He's a good motivator. But he can't do like 3D. He can't like do incredible environments or prop designs. He is not that. Um, he's one of my favorites. Don't get me wrong. Let's say you have a job that requires you to work 10.5 hours a day, five days a week. How would you balance that and do freelance work plus work on improving your quality if you don't have any other stuff, wife, girlfriend, so on? Uh, first step is find a different job that pays more and you work less. Jobs like being like maybe a car salesman, a bank teller, these types of jobs. And they also have like a nine to five to them. So they're like you're in and out. They're probably the most dry type jobs and probably the most boring. And they definitely require you to have some, a little bit more of just like a starting ability, you know? Uh, but you ultimately need to just not start with a job that's just like working you slave hours, you know what I mean? Um, but even if you did have that circumstance, um, you still have like the weekends, you still have at least some days off. Just wake up earlier, try to remove any of the other, all distractions and just work on that because the reality is that's your circumstances and there's nothing you can do about it, you know? Other than find a new job um, that pays you more for work, less work, right? And then, and then you, you should spend more time trying to build up that skill. I recommend you only really need to spend about three hours a day at the worst case scenario, about 15 hours a week, okay? And you can even spread that even further to like 2.5 hours a day if you also include the weekends, okay? There was this experiment to see how people would do if they were essentially, you know, um, given a different school system to go through. So the first school is just your average middle school. And then the second school was a music inspired music, uh, middle school, meaning that people who attended this school would be introduced to a lot of musical instruments and have a lot of musical homework. So what, what happened? Well, um, they took a group of people that are elementary school that were going to go to middle school and divided it in half with some people in one group being musically, you know, inclined. They had some skills already and in the other group also having musically inclined people. So it was pretty well balanced and it was kind of random so that everybody would have a group of people that, you know, ultimately was the same as best as they could. Uh, the kids who went to the music school went for a year as well as the people who went to the regular school went for a year. And after the year, they tested their music abilities to see how much they've improved. The people who went to a regular middle school, they, they did not improve at all. And the people who are musically inclined, they improved a little bit, you know? So there was definitely improvement for those who were already interested in music. But anybody that wasn't, they pretty much were at the same level after a year. Now we take the second group, what happened? Well, in the second group, even the worst musician amongst that group, like the one that might've performed the worst amongst them all, was leaps and bounds better 
than the best musical kid who went to a regular school. Do you understand what I'm getting at? So there was like huge improvements for those who actually went to a school that was all about music. And the defining factor that they came, came to realize was that in the regular middle school, they had half an hour every other day, which was you know, devoted to music, but it wasn't mandatory. Like they didn't have to like really learn. It was more like, like recess, okay? So people usually treated it like that. They would just dick around, okay? So it was about like an hour or so, maybe 1.5 hours of actual musical training that was allocated for them, but people didn't even use that time, okay? And then group, uh, the second group, the one that went to the musical school, they had three hours of training every day, meaning that they had about two hours of training during the day, or I'm sorry, they had one hour of training during the day, like they had a class that was all about music and they had to stay focused. They were, had to pay attention and they had to do what was asked of them. And not only that, they were tested on it and they were given two hours worth of homework every day. So they were spending about three hours total every day learning their musical instrument for about a year. So that's about 15 hours a week. And again, this wasn't like, the worst kid was like barely any good. Like this guy was really good. He was just was the worst amongst all the other students. And even the worst, like I said, was like, like you would think that that person was inc incredibly talented. You understand what I'm saying? What this research shows me is that you don't need to spend 10 hours a day. You just need to be consistent. And I do think that somewhere between four to five hours a day is probably the most ideal, okay? Meaning that you should try to get 20, maybe 30 hours of real good training a week. But if you are strapped for time for whatever their circumstances are, because people have different circumstances and I respect that, about roughly about 15 um, hours should be the baseline. Got it? That's my overall advice. Hope that helps. Obviously it's case by case. Not everybody has the same circumstances, but that's a good one to kind of to live by, at least in my opinion. Cool. Any other questions? Everyone's like just soaking in that information. <laughs> You're like, oh man. Yeah, it's just um I understand though, you know, we live in a culture and a society where it's like you gotta like be grinding, 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 or you're a piece of shit. <laughs> you know? Uh I don't subscribe to this philosophy, not anymore. I don't think it's healthy. I don't think it's wise. It sets uh, a bad precedence. Uh, if you look at like cultures who have this philosophy, right? They also have high depression and high suicide rates. You know what I mean? Is like, is that really what we want? <laughs> you know? All for the sake of uh, appeasing the capitalistic gods. It's probably not ideal. You know, I was talking to my friend about this too. And uh, he, he was like, he was like, well, you're not, you don't like capitalism? And uh, I said, not really. And it's like, I don't, uh, it's not that I don't like the idea that people should have ownership of their goods and be able to make profits from that and make money, you know? I think that, in its essence is what the founding fathers kind of were like all about, you know, but they had no idea that like Jeff Bezos would exist, you know, like Amazon, <laughs> you know what I mean? They didn't have the concept of the, the, the 
ramifications of escalated capitalism. You know, uh, China is exploiting our capitalistic tendencies. They're buying all our countries. <laughs> They're buying all our products. They're buying all of our manufacturers. They're buying our film industry. They're buying our game industry. You know, they got they got their hands everywhere, man. <laughs> you know, and um, like even real estate, like they're buying our houses and selling them back to us. Like American dollars are subsidizing Chinese governments. <laughs> it's because uh, cap capitalism um, thrives on greed. And so if you're greedy, then you're going to do well. You're going to do really well in our, in the game that we've created for ourselves, you know, and those who aren't uh, tend to usually get the, the blunt end of the stick. You know what I mean? So I'm not a big fan of it because it's like, as a human, I don't think it's healthy to kind of have that mentality of like fight, 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 push, 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 you know, but that is the game. And if you know how to play it, you'll do all right. Okay. And I do think that there's a minimal viable way of doing that. And I usually suggest that. I don't want people to overwork themselves. I think people can work consistently and constantly and eventually get to their monetary goals, you know, career goals, but also maintain a life, work-life balance that's healthy and will bring more happiness to their life, right? They'll feel, there'll be more fulfillment. Um, so I highly recommend not to spend like countless amounts of your time just fighting and grinding like just try to work it out be smart about it anyway neoliberalism li liberalism <laughs> yeah i don't want to get too political i i have my opinions about all the pol politics of all kinds uh i just don't like any kind of policy or po politics that ultimately treat the majority of the people poorly. That's ultimately where I stand. I'm very, I try to stay on the empathetic side of things as best I can, you know? <clears throat> and uh, I'm not a politician. I don't know any of this stuff, geopolitics. It's just my opinions. <laughs> anyway, anyway. With all that being said, I think, uh, wait, Chris, thanks for the suggestion. Oh, I think weight training helped me a lot doing this. I like to start a course. I need to, uh, advice for dealing with shoulder and hand pain when drawing. Oh yeah, I actually do have advice. So when you have shoulder and uh, hand pain, it's almost always contributed to some sort of level of like pushing too hard on your devices like when you're drawing you're pushing too hard i never have hand pain um because i just don't do that i push very lightly there's a solutions to this start to pay attention to that you're how you're pushing down also um look at how your posture is and then also go through the tools and actually lower the pressure sensitivity so you don't have to push as hard and just start adapting to this new standard ultimately like you're overexerting yourself like think about what you're doing like you're just drawing so there should be no reason why you're like constantly you know having pain like you're not doing anything that's such a hard exertion of your efforts um so posture is helpful weight training is a great idea because then you can build uh stronger muscles when stronger muscles uh, can usually maintain longer and harder uh, loads right so that's a, that's a great idea i think that's a good advice too but anyway, um, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Cheers, y'all. Um, have a great weekend. Work hard. Stay focused. Don't be strangers. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace, right. friends. Have a good one. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.